name is Sarah Miller and I am our Director of Partnerships here at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. I wanted to take some time today to walk you all through the new commitment form that we've recently just launched. This new commitment model is um, really aligned with our new clinical services and products that our you know, great clinical team has developed over the last year, including the, our apps blueprints, the educational resources, and our newest virtual coaching. So today I wanted to walk you all through the process of you know what it means to make a commitment on our website starting from the registration process all the way to you know filling out the form, um, answering all of our questions, and submitting the commitment to be reviewed by our internal team. So you'll see here that I am on the home page of the website. Um, you know, some of you might have an account with us already, um, others will have to register up here, but I will start with logging in since I already have an account. So you'll click log in. You will type in your username and password, which I will do right now. And once you log in, you will see a few, a few new things if you're not already familiar with our dashboard. So if you go to click my dashboard, that is where all of your information will be housed as, as it relates to being a healthcare professional. You have you know, our, our apps blueprints, which are our newly expanded blueprints um, that can really help get your organization to zero harm. Communities, so work groups, discussion boards um, that you can use to really you know, speak with other hospitals and healthcare organizations and have those conversations about what, you know, you'd like to contribute to the actionable patient safety solutions. And here's where you'll make the commitment. So you'll see here that in my dashboard, I obviously have not made a commitment just yet. So you'll click this green arrow to make the commitment. And this is where you'll begin the form. So a lot of my information is already populated in here. So name, first name, last name, email address, I'll just put a phone number in here just to move on to the next section. I'll ask for your title, organization address, and then this is a new feature now. So we are expanding outside of just acute care settings. So we wanted to bring in all of the different types of facilities that might fall outside of acute care settings. So ambulatory surgery centers, all the way to urgent care and other um, different types of organizations. So you can actually multi-select here. So if you are an organization that has multiple of these um, types of facilities, we ask that you list them. Um, number of beds, so I'll just put here you know, 1,500 as an example. Um, organization URL, if you'd like to include this. Twitter handle, if you'd like to include this as well. Any key participants, so these are you know additional people that you'd like to be Include it on the form so that if we're unable to reach you, um, we have an alternative person to reach out to. So I will put in this case, Ariana, our Chief Operating Officer, as an example. Email address. And then you'll click Next Step. Okay, the next section is, you know, why is your organization committed to zero? Obviously, the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, you know, really strives for zero. We know it's a very audacious goal, but we want to understand, you know, why organizations are really passionate about joining the foundation. So we'll ask you here, you know, why are you committed to zero? Click next step. And then this is our newest um, you know, section of the commitment form. This is all the cl new clinical changes that we are really excited to announce. So our clinical team has built out the actionable patient safety solutions into three different sections. Um, I would really encourage you all, if you're not familiar with the apps, to click on this link right here and it will take you to another page to learn a li little bit more about them. But you know, really something new that we wanted to launch within this um, new commitment model is that we really believe that there are three critical components to transforming safety and creating highly reliable systems. So the first is person-centered culture safety. The second is a holistic continuous improvement framework. And the third is an effective model for sustainment. So I won't go into in-depth detail about what these are, but just so you all know, if you hover over the I, we have provided definitions for each of these, if you're not familiar with each of what each of these are. 
And, you know, the newest change to our commitment model that we are excited to kind of talk through today is instead of hospitals committing to individual actionable patient safety solutions, we are asking hospitals and healthcare organizations and, you know, any other organizations that might be outside of the acute care hospital setting to commit to zero. And what this means is that your organization is committing to implementing and sustaining a foundation for safety and reliability that includes these three components. So again, I would encourage you all to take a look at each of these three. And if you're wanting to move on to the next step by committing to zero by making this commitment, we ask you at the bottom here, do you commit to eliminating harm from medical error by aligning your organization with these three critical components? Yes or no? If you click no, um, we will ask you to return back when you are ready. Um, you'll see here that the next step button will be grayed out so you won't be able to you know, move on. But um, again, whenever you're ready, we encourage you to come back. But if you do answer yes, it will take you to the next step. So this is really where the bulk of the commitment um, starts to come into play. So you'll see here, um, we will actually ask three questions. Um, what is your organization doing to establish each of these three critical components? So you'll see here that the first one is, what is your organization doing to establish a person-centered culture of safety? We'll ask that you list it out here. And then what we want to understand is, you know, where on the continuum do you think your organization stands in each of these three components? So we have novice all the way to expert, so you can select wherever you think your organization is. And again, we'll ask that for each of these three components. So the next one is establishing a holistic continuous improvement framework. Again, where on the continuum do you think your organization stands? And then finally, what is your organization doing is to stay in an organizational development approach? So again, this is just a test for me. And then where on the continuum do you think your organization stands? Again, we understand that organizations will be novice all the way to expert, but we just want to use this to gather data so that if your hospital is wanting to do some virtual coaching with our chief clinical officer and our clinical team, we'll have some data to kind of use that going into your first session. So you'll click on the next step here. And then this is the last step. So, you know, we, we've we changed our model a little bit. We won't be asking for life saved in the initial commitment, um, but we will be creating a reporting period. So, you know, instead of having people report how many lives they believe to be saving through their work, we will actually um, ask you to come back at another time. Um, the time is to be determined. We haven't officially announced the reporting period, but in the meantime, what we're going to ask is what other patient safety challenges is your organization planning to continue working on? We know that hospitals and healthcare systems have so much on their plate already, in addition to really committing to these three critical components. So what we've done is we've taken the actionable patient safety solutions that we've developed, and we've split it out into all of these different sections. So you'll see foundational, head, chest, belly, body, and we want you to check off what you're doing. So if your organization is doing an initiative around person and family engagement, mental health, pain management, um, I'll just select a few here, um, but you'll see that you can multi-select them. So when you submit these to us, we will understand, you know, prior to your organization committing, you know, what other initiatives you're working on as they relate to the actionable patient safety solutions that we work on developing. So, um, you know, you'll see here at the bottom that we encourage your organization to utilize all of the resources that we do provide. Again, the apps are free. You can download them for free of charge. And here you'll see virtual coaching. So we are now offering virtual coaching for all of the committed hospitals within our network. Um, so once you submit this, if you are interested in virtual coaching, there's a separate form that you can fill out. But you'll see here at the bottom that we will actually ask you to come back and report your data. Um, we will be asking for serious safety events and near miss event rates. Um, but again, our reporting period will be announced soon. But we, we really just want hospitals to you know, learn more about the work that we're doing and commit to these three critical components. And, you know, once you do that, you're in our network and there are a lot of, you know, benefits and added values of partnership that come with that. Um, you'll see here some, um, you know, acknowledgements about your commitment appearing on our website, um, you know, being added to different sections, your logo, um, information about the commitment. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and once you submit it, you'll see that there will be a little pop-up message that comes up. 
And typically it takes about 24 to 48 hours for our internal team to take a look at it and you know make sure we don't have any questions. Um, I am our director of partnerships here, but as next steps, we would really encourage you to you know, schedule some time with us and learn a little bit more about what the process means once you join the movement and all the different great resources that we can provide you completely free of charge. So that is, in a nutshell, what the commitment process is. The barrier to entry is a little bit easier, um, but you'll see here that the, the length in terms of how long it takes to you know, submit a commitment is less than 10 minutes, and once you submit it, you know, the team will reach out to you if we have any other questions.